YouTubers, Shinny D's in the house again. This one is part 12 of the Ford Transit Mark 1 build. So last one you see now, got it running. Well chuffed with that. So just carrying on from that one. Uh, just doing the air intake at the minute. So obviously I've got to incorporate the MAF sensor. Um, so I've made this little bit of pipe here, a bracket on it, a breather pipe and put a plate on it and then just filed out that square there so that's for the math sensor to go in so that slots in oh wrong way that one slots in there like that i've just got two little allen heads to screw in there so that'll go in there and then i've made a little bracket down there it just goes in an elbow and that bracket will bolt onto there so i'll get that chucked on with the air filter on top that's the air filter back on now little bracket there what i've done a little tube with a math sensor in it and then i've got the crankcase breather there as well so yeah she's all bolted up all right now nice and sturdy as well on the engine that little bracket there so it's not going anywhere that anyway so i've got some rally mud flaps just some four mil um, just cut them out myself I've got two out of the, uh, well I've got two for the rear out of one actually. So that's what I've done there. Put a bit of stainless strip on there and pot riveted him. And then I've done a little bit of an angle bracket at the back of it. Just there, uh, painted that black and pot riveted that. So I've got the same to do on the other side and then on the front I'm gonna do two full, full ones so. Get on with that. So satisfying that. It's like therapy. So I just made these two covers. That's going over where my fuse box is in the dashboard. The next one is just going over my instrument cluster in the dashboard, so I'm just going to uh, scotch them down and then next prime and put some satin black on them. Got that cover on there, I've got a quick release bolt there because obviously I'm using it as a test bus as well, so what I'll be testing instrument clusters in it as well and I've got that cover on there so looks a little bit better anyway that comes off dead easy as well it's just a quick release so everything's done under the bonnet now uh, got the fan on that's all good uh, chucks up a washer bottle in there uh, got the air filter on start to make a little bit of a funky pipe for the math sensor and the oil breather so I've done that so that's all finished under there now, happy days. So for the speedo sensor pickup, I've just put a little hall sensor on the prop shaft. It's actually a cam sensor off a of Deo Matiz. So you can see it there anyway, I just made a little bracket. So it just picks up on them lobes there, all three of them on the prop yoke, so, on the flange. So that's working, but it's reading around twice as fast as it should be doing. Put it in like third gear, got it out. Tick over is like 28 mile an hour. Put it in sixth gear. Tick over is like 55 mile an hour, 50 odd mile an hour, so. So what I'm gonna do is order a little unit which plugs in, you're doing for Land Rovers as well. 
and it just corrects it so there's the normal connection which goes normally on the transfer box sensor on the Defender on a Land Rover um, I've just wired this into the hall sensor and I can just unplug that and plug it in between there so I've ordered that also with the, with the fuel gauge we had some trouble because the sender unit was a different ohmage than the gauge itself it was not to 180 ohms on the sender unit and this is way higher it's like 560 ohms for you know the range so I've got this little converter box here and that seems to be working all right it's got like a little PIC chip inside and a couple of little buttons which you can program it with so that's rectified that problem so I've got that sorted so that's all right I put this little cowling on here painted it satin black that's off the Mark 7 Transit and I've just cut it all out and it just neatens it up a little bit. I know it's still sticking right out front dashboard but it'll do me that. So that's alright as well. I've got this stuff which has just come, it's just felt lined, um, window, channel, so I've got the, uh, the normal problem, hang on, where's my window winder? So, the dreaded play in it. <laughs> so yeah, the channel goes up here and right up there. So I'm gonna drag that out and replace it with this stuff on both sides. So, get that sorted. So that's them felt runners in. Quite good quality actually. So that's better. Not as much rattle in there. A bit better. Done the driver side one as well. That was a bit of a pain, but she's in. Happy days. So I've had these flexible solar panels for ages. They're them cheapo ones you can get. They're dead good quality. Uh, the Fuji ones which you can get um, eBay and there's a guy in the Netherlands who's selling them. That's who I got, who I got these from. And basically they was too long. Like if you can see they're in different sections. There's like three sections now where they split there and there was four so i've cut one section off and then you can see these little tiny connections there which you can barely solder to well these are actually two separate panels in parallel and all the rest are in series you can see the little tie connections there so all i've done is i just soldered a wire which is a, a bit fiddly so one connection there and one connection there and there's the wire there this is just sicko flex that so i've done that and they work all right you've got to use an inverter with them because they, they, these now they'll be about 240 volts but obviously you can't just run them direct you've still got to stabilize the supply so i've got an inverter for them anyway uh, the other connection on the other side is dead easy just as a tab i've just put some of that sicko flex you can see it there where i soldered it so them two are going on the roof they'll just about fit so that's all good and then i'll put the inverter in the vehicle um, you just fit on the roof nicely if you just have a look just climb, climb up and show you so what I'll, I'll be doing is i'll put one on this side i've got some foam tape coming just to fill that ridge up and then i've got some special like caravan adhesive where the, what they build caravans with um, so I'll put one over that ridge when I filled it in. This ridge will be left free and then the other one over that ridge but I'm going to have to drill through the flipping roof back and front in four places to put the wires in and then I'll put sicko flex to insulate it which I'm not happy about but got to do it. So that's that. Um, got this which came this is for well, it's my speedo healer so that's where i was going on about i've got that speedo problem yeah where it's like about twice too fast it come with a kit which you can plug directly straight in and then you can just adjust it there it's got a digital readout and the set up and set down so yeah i'll chuck that on get that sorted and i'll probably put it on the dyno just to um, calibrate it so that's all good that's come 
I purchased a couple of seats off eBay. Uh, they're actually out of a camper and um, they don't have a left hand drive on, but it doesn't make no difference to me. It's only because of this arm there. But on the base of them, they've got an actual swivel base on both of them, even the double seater as well. They're fully reclinable jobs in swivel base. So you just trigger that and the actual swivel. So I've just got to make a base for them or use the original transit ones, you know, with a, with a slider on. Because this one I'll definitely have to slide right back if I want to use that because of the steering wheel that will get in the way. Um, so yeah, well chuffed with them. In quite a good nick as well. So yeah, that's them. And then got loads of soundproofing mat. I went with the Dodo mat because it's really good quality. It's got loads of good reviews. I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube people putting them in the camper vans and that. I was gonna go Dynamat, but this is just as good. So, yeah, and it's a bit cheaper as well. So I've got the pro stuff. Um, this is the more expensive stuff, what they sell. But it's so heavy, this stuff, you know. It's deceiving because it's so thin. Yeah, but it's really heavy duty stuff. So I'm gonna do all the floor in the expensive stuff. And then I've got, they brought some new stuff out. Um, uh, dead hex stuff so I've got some in rolls and I've got some in the little mats as well so that's not much thinner than that stuff to be honest it's a little bit of lightweight so I think I'll do all the sides and the roof in this stuff and probably inside the doors as well so I've got that who did I get that from now sound deadening shop off eBay um, which are uh, CAD distribution. So, yeah, they delivered it next day. It's about the best price you can get it, actually. There's a few places what do it, but yeah, they do a good price on that. And then I got some of the four-way stretchable carpet because I'll be doing my own headlining and, you know, stretching it over the sides and stuff like that. So, got a load of that. There's loads of it in there as well and loads of adhesive, spray adhesive as well. And um, all that lot is from, who is it from? Oh, Mega, Mega Van Mats off eBay. So that was next day delivery as well. So that's all good. So yeah, I've got loads of goodies. So yeah, I just need to crack on with it all now, innit? So I think I'll, uh, first thing, uh, while it's jacked up, I'll get that chucked on, innit? So this should be easy to chuck in. Like I say, I've got the, original plug there in the loom and I've also replicated what the original sender plug would be even though I've done that different sender unit on the prop shaft so really I should be able to just unplug it all and plug it in. Well, I've just done it by minus 50% because I think that's somewhere near. So I'm going to put it in six gear. Let's push out. That's a lot better, that. So I'll take it up, do the rev. I think I might have to take a little bit more off, but. We're getting there, it's working anyway, so I'll do the rest on the dyno. So that's working good, that. Happy days. Oh yeah, I got some of this as well. Big roll of 35 mil. It's not rock wool, it's that non-itchy stuff. Insulation, that's off mega van mats as well. So that'll be doing all the ceiling and the sides and that. Should be nice and cosy. So I've just done a test fit of the seats and they fit all right. Just got them on blocks of wood at the minute. 
but um, they actually swivel around and everything so I'm definitely going to be using them so I'll probably make some little boxes underneath and reinforce them with steel and then I'll have a bit of storage underneath them as well so that's all good I've done all up behind the bulkhead there, it's a bit fiddly with all the wires and in and out, should have done it before I put everything in really, but that's all done now, that's with the heavy duty stuff that. Nice and easy to cut anyway. So that's the sides done. Went on dead easy actually, it's quite easy to work with. I'm glad I got the rolls for the sides, but for the ceiling I might use the pads because it's a bit hard doing it on your own, you know, getting it around all these ridges and that with a roller. I'll see anyway, but I've nearly run out of the roll anyway, so I might do the back doors and the side doors in it, and then uh, move on to the ceiling. So I've used all my rolls up, and pretty much all the pads as well, but it's pretty much done, other than a few bits at the back, on the roof and the side, so I've done all in, there's a bit in there I've got to do, but I've done all inside the doors, um, all of it as well, you know, not just a few little patches, I've done the whole lot, done the sides, I've done most of the roof, I've just got to get that headlining down and do underneath there, so I'm going to have to order some more, uh, it's got a strip and few bits down there I've got to do. Uh, done all the back doors, done the side door. So yeah, it's all getting there. Just got to do all the floor in the black stuff like I've done in the front there. Just got to uh, finish that off. I've got one and a half boxes left, so it's going to be close. Might have to order some more of that as well. But yeah, it's good stuff. Goes on all right. A uh, bit tricky when you're doing a full roll on the ceiling. So I did just two rolls and then the rest I did in all the patches. But it makes a hell of a difference, you know, like, quietens it right down. So well chuffed with that. It's expensive, but it's worth doing it. So yeah, finish all the floor off and that, but I might do all the insulation and panelling and carpeting. Um, up on the ceiling and the sides before I do the floor so I'm not standing in it all so yeah happy days getting there and then I've just got to carry on with the floor from the front going back like I say it's all done up there the tricky bit so yeah that'll do happy day so I think I'll call it it on this one so yeah thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one